This conference will now be recorded. I have Bob's screen ready to go, but he's not here yet. Okay. May I ask if uh, people can see me, Bob Michaels? We cannot see you, Bob. We can hear you, though. Okay. Well, I'm having want, difficulties. Do you, you want us to see you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. So we need a couple of mutes. I need a little help getting this on There's, an iPad. On an, oh boy, not an iPad. <laughs> we, we've had trouble with this before. Um, so, is there, do you see, do you see where your mic, mic button is? Yes, I do. There should be a camera button right next to it. I can't remember where it is on the iPad. Oh, yes. And then just click that and it should pop on. It did, it did indeed. Okay, we don't see you quite yet, but maybe it's coming. <laughs> okay. You might have to give. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, there we he see, is. Yeah, we yeah. see. We see. We don't see you. We see your table. <laughs> you yeah. see my table. Right. Oh, it's around. Around. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to get into my camera, I suspect. Hi, Brooke. How's the uh, crash out? Was it in front of your house? No, oh. it was like right across from Shane Place. Oh. oh. Yeah. Same, it's the same spot. It was like a rear end fender bender. I'll say that everything was okay, but the front of like a Ford Mustang was all crunched up. Jeez. Teenage driver. Yeah, that's what um, John said. Hey, uh, Dorothy and everybody on the trustee side, um, I told Charlie I'd give him a five, ten minute heads up when he's, when he's up. He's got his hands full today with a personal thing, so uh, just give me the nod when, when I think it's time to get him on the line. And he may or may not be able to join us, but... Uh, okay. Je uh, Dorothy has to give... Um, Jeff's doing the same thing. She's going to give Jeff a call when we're ready. We got okay. a lot of... A lot of chaos happening yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a cat under Bob's table. Yeah, there is. We went back to, uh, unfortunately, went back to the backwards camera. Okay, so we we we're, we're waiting for Captain Delizer and the mayor. I was in earlier and he was due back anytime, so. I, excuse me, um, I can see myself full screen, but I can't see anybody else. Because I think you need to turn your, your camera around, Bob. I think you have it, had it pointing out to the room instead of reversing well, it. Well, I the... did, but I did turn it around and I can see myself sitting in front of the iPad now. Okay. But, uh, hmm. It's... I cannot see anybody else, just myself, full screen. Although I see that it's divided into nine segments. That may be a function of my camera, actually. Um, okay. Any uh, idea want... how I can hey, get to Bob, see everybody? Um, Bob, you, you want to swipe. You're on an iPad? Yes. Okay, you want to swipe and and... Use the swipe gesture, and I think that'll bring up everybody's picture. Try that. Um, Zach, you dealt with this last time. Um, yeah. On, on an iPad, how to see everybody? This is on an Android. Mine's on an Android. Ah, uh, okay. Which I can't see anybody who, besides whoever's making the most noise. Bob, this is our, at the top of your screen, there might be two arrows that says view. Um, that. View? It says, every, it says everybody or just who's talking. It's at the top of your screen, maybe. 
I know, uh, uh, well, let me get back into go to meeting. Okay, so we, we have, uh, are we waiting for Don Corby? Okay. Yep, I'm going to go offline for a half a second, send him a text and see where he is. Okay. I'll be right back. I see a list of, Art, I see a list of uh, attendees, including myself. Is there at the middle, at the upper, a little arrow that goes up and down? No, there's Art, not. Art, he's on an iPad, which is different than a desktop. Okay. <laughs> now I have everybody back here. Now I see everybody. I've got, but every time I change my screen to forward screen, I lose everybody. Screen. Um, you want to sit in front of your, oh, never mind. I won't sit work. backwards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to change the camera again. Hello, Officer Delizer. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Hello, Captain. Hey, there the we go. I had to unmute first to say to say uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> How are we? This is my first time, so I'm getting used to this. <laughs> Tell us what's your title. What's the right way to? Um, uh, are you? What's your title? I'm the captain of the A-Zone substation, but uh, Andy is perfectly fine for me. Thank you. <laughs> no, we're, we're full respect. You will be Captain Delizer, if that's okay with you. Uber. Whatever whatever everybody feels comfortable with. Okay, thank you. I will I, I will answer to either or. Okay. I can't break out of the, uh, the captain part. <laughs> I haven't been able to call Did you, you call Andy yet. In order? We can't hear you, Bob. We can't hear, hear you, Bob. Can you hear can me I now? Have the, the okay. mic is on. Uh, hold on, maybe there the you sound. Go. I can hear you. You're can good. you hear me now? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to call the meeting to order. Lamp Do I have your a second. second? All Lamp in your favor? Second. Aye. Aye. We're doing the roll call, right, Dorothea? Yes, yep, so Dorothy I'm... is going to do a roll call on every motion, yeah. okay. just like we've been doing it for a couple weeks now. Okay, Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. aye. Trustee Stetzer. <coughs> Stetzer, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Trustee Lamphere, aye. I'm just going to ask if you're not actively speaking, please mute yourself. The outside noise is very interfering for everybody else, okay? So just remember yep. to mute and unmute it. Make it a better experience for everybody, okay? Thank you. Okay, does anyone have any issues they'd like to disclose? No? Everyone knows? Trustee Lamphere, I do not. I do not. Trustee Galusha, nothing to report. Okay. All right. Uh, just one note. Uh, they finally um, uh, were patching the potholes today. Uh, this is thanks to Zach. Zach approached the DPW way back in March. They were shut down with a reduced crew for quite a while. The asphalt plants opened late this year, uh, but it finally got done. So thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. They were out All there right. a lot. There was a lot to do. There was a lot to do. There's still more to do. Um, in any case, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Renee. Uh, Renee has been talking to the Sheriff's Department, so I'm going to give you the floor, Renee. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I, it's like our first beautiful day in a while, and I, so I want to thank everyone for being here and to Captain Delizer for taking the time to meet with us. Um, I want to give a little background for Captain Delizer on how we got here, then let him introduce himself, and then uh, let all of you share your experiences and your concerns with him, and then we can talk about uh, what we can do together to implement some changes immediately for the safety of, of um, this neighborhood. Um, now we have Zach, our uh, DPW director here, and our um, code enforcement and, and um, building inspector, in addition to all the, the trustees. So um, the residents um, 
that are here on your screen and who live along State Street have been asking for assistance to tackle the speeding on their street for years and years, um, long before I was even living in um, the village or even Rochester. Um, I know that speeding on this road was identified as an issue in 2005 in that pedestrian safety and, and uh, traffic calming plan. And the village inherited all of this traffic that resulted from the town's growth. And these residential streets are used as a speedway on the way to the, the highway in Pittsford Plaza and wherever else um, everyone is going. It's a state road, which means it's not under our jurisdiction. And in spite of having to live with the consequences of what happens on this road and the, the impact of the quality of life of these residents. There are about 15,000 vehicles a day that travel on this short section of State Street. Um, there are no crosswalks on the section of State Street in spite of this being a residential neighborhood, as we mentioned before. The speed just before the village line is 45 miles per hour. Um, the eastbound, so heading out of the village, 85th percentile speed is 44, 44 miles per hour. And we know that a pedestrian hit at that speed has less than 10% chance of survival. And that's assuming that that's like a, a, a 30 year old male um, pedestrian, if it's a, a child or an older person and an SUV, um, the statistics are much more grim. So there's nothing in the design of this neighborhood road that signals to the driver to slow down and there appear to be no incentives for drivers to alter their behavior. Engineering um, or the design of the road is one piece of the puzzle. And you know that we're working with DOT as part of the State Street Bridge Project and part of their pedestrian safety action plan. Um, to make changes, education is another piece. We're trying to pass some legislation to lower the speed limits on um, the state roads. Um, all of these are, you know, long-term long-term solutions, and we and taking a while to implement. And we need to know what we can do now, what we have in our toolbox to help calm traffic on this this road. And enforcement is a critical piece of this. We need an ally in law enforcement to help us encourage drivers to slow down. Um, so it's important that the neighborhood know Captain Delizer and that he has a relationship with this neighborhood as well. So um, I would like to hand it over to Captain Delizer to introduce himself and then we'll um, let you all give him a little bit of insight on what you experience every day. Okay, and I'll apologize ahead of time. I'm getting used to muting and unmuting when I'm talking and listening. So it might take me a few minutes before I get kind of used to that whole thing. Uh, absolutely. I actually spent about 20 minutes uh, last night out there from about 10 till 4 till about 10 after 4, uh, just driving back and forth, sitting a little bit, uh, just kind of watching. I drive an unmarked car, so uh, I can get a pretty accurate uh, picture of what's going on. People aren't going to slow down when they see me. They're not going to realize I'm a police car until they're on top of me. Um, definitely, uh, the traffic wasn't too heavy, so I don't think I got a really great picture of what you're probably seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, but from what I did see, definitely uh, coming into the village westbound, uh, I did see a lot of cars that were going well in excess of the speed limit in there. Um, so there's definitely, and I would imagine, I didn't see a lot of eastbound traffic, but I would imagine as people are crossing the bridge, they're probably speeding up right from there in anticipation of hitting that 45 mile an hour uh, zone outside the village. So what we've been doing since uh, since uh, Renee reached out to me uh, a little while ago about this uh, this topic, I've had my Pittsburgh cars have been have been uh, kind of scouting that out and seeing how things are looking. Uh, there's definitely some challenges for us with enforcement. Just so you, you're aware, it won't it won't uh, affect us being there. Just some of the things that the deputies have relayed back to me uh, after they've been out there a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot of great places for them to sit head on uh, there. The back and forth, hold on a moment. The back and forth uh, uh, for them is a little tough on moving radar because they've got to make a turnaround there to get around to the car and that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But that's nothing that we're not used to. We deal with that on a lot of other roadways. So uh, they will figure it out. Uh, it's going to take them a little bit of time. Uh, but I think the main Thing that is going to help reduce the speed in there even more so than tickets is just us being there and being seen so even if uh the deputy isn't going to be able to be in a good spot where they can remain hidden where they might be able to get a ticket if they're there being seen people are going to automatically slow down 
and uh, and listen to the speed limit. Excuse me. Ugh. I'll have to step away in a couple of seconds to take that one because they're gonna they're gonna keep calling. I have a feeling. But uh, in addition to the uh, to the getting the deputies out there, I already spoke with our with our crime prevention uh, deputy deputy Todd Thurston. I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with him before, but uh, he is going to be getting in the next week or two the speed trailer out there. Uh, that's the uh, sheriff's office. You know, I'm sure we're all familiar with them. That uh, the flash speed as people go by. So. Um, that should be in the next week or two. We're on the list for it. I put us on the list a couple of days ago. So as soon as that becomes available, it's on a couple of, there's, we have two of them. They're both on other locations, but I'm on the waiting list for uh, one of them. When they open up from their current location, it should be coming. Uh, it should be coming to us. I'm actually going to step away for a moment now and take that phone call. I will be back hopefully in a couple of minutes. Thank you. <laughs> What was what was the name of that? It was like a speed. A speed a trailer. trailer. It's just a radar, trailer. so it'll Thanks. show the I speed. Didn't, I didn't know the yeah. that they used. Um, we do want to know. I'm curious. I don't know if it does both sides. Um, Zach, do you know? Will it only be able to do one direction at a time, or or is it different than the one that we have? Yeah, it's it's going to be similar to ours, except for it's a trailer. So it's only going to be able to check um, the speed coming in one direction. Um, today, after DOT was done doing their patchwork on State Street, I was able to get over there and put out our speed sentry. Um, it's mounted okay. on the speed thing right by the village uh, sign on um, just past uh, Durham Way. So, it, it, so facing um, going out of the village or coming in? Coming into. So on the westbound. Okay. Great. It would be great if we um, could was, have that up at the same time they put the speed trailer so we could catch catch people going both directions. Did you put the cones out that we spoke of the other day, uh, Zach? Yeah, the cones are out also. Uh, I just can't guarantee how long anything is going to stay out there once DOT catches wind. Right, right, right. Oh, did, has, has, have you explained to everybody what we're trying to do with the cones? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I put cones on um, both sides of the road, eastbound and westbound, and tried to um, narrow down the the, um, the shoulder of the road to not create a wedge. I, I, let let me explain that. that. By, necking, was, by necking the road down at the uh, village line, we're trying to give the drivers a visual cue since we don't have any other uh, other physical changes to indicate that drivers should slow down other than the 30 mile per hour speed limit. But by putting cones that kind of ease into the shoulder at, at the line, we're just, we wanna see, and, and we'd ask you to pay attention and see if it has any effect whatsoever. We know that none of these things unilaterally are going to make a huge difference. I, I've made this point over and over again, but the only way to have a successful change is to use every tool we have available. Everything that John mentioned on his list, on the email he sent out earlier, and I think also the, the renewed crosswalks at Durham Way and Shane Place with yield signs in the center of the road. So I was out there today, um, it, it was uh, early this morning, and looking at the, the, the curb cut there where we want them to put the crosswalk right where the canal path goes over uh, the road before the bridge. Um, is that going to be, I mean, the, the two crosswalks, um, getting those installed is a cheap, immediate solution. If we can get DOT to, to agree to it, I don't know what the, you know, what standards they'll require um, in order to justify it, but um, the curb cut seems to me like it's going to be a bit of a hurdle. When, when I, um, well, the curb cut's not a big deal. We can saw cut that. And awesome. you know, if they, it, no, it really isn't a big deal. Um, and I spent considerable time when the uh, DOT had their information meeting, I think it was in December or January, uh, talking to the director and making the case. We, we talked a little bit about the, the um, detour on Shane Place, but I also hit them hard on the need for uh, physical changes to the block on this se section of State Street to narrow the striping of the lanes, restore the crosswalks and the yield signs. Uh, and we've I have got, a, 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a big concern <clears throat> about putting in a crosswalk by the bridge at this point until the traffic is slowed down because it gives families and children the sense of security that they can cross. Mm -hmm. And until the traffic is taken care of and the speed, I think we're going to have a, a terrible accident mm -hmm. out there. If you don't do it, you'll never produce a change. Um, you can. I know, but can we just put the sign up in the middle of the road and not paint you, the you crosswalk? Have to, yeah. to, to do it, you have to comply with the New York State won't allow us to do that. You have to have a, a crosswalk. Having the crosswalk and the sign there is a visual cue to drivers to slow down, just like it is everywhere else. When we first put those signs out 20 years ago, they were completely ignored. And although we don't have full compliance, driver behavior has changed as those signs have spread not only in this village, but in other nearby municipalities. I think- I, I just have one more thing to say. Unless you're walking and you're at the crown of that grid, you cannot see children on bikes 20 feet away. The reason, the reason we're trying to lower speeds and why we're going to the lowest legally permitted speed limit possible is because that gives drivers more time to react and actually makes it, that's the whole point of all of this. At the speeds they're traveling now, we have accidents and accidents that are severe because drivers are distracted and they don't have time to react. By using every tool to throw, slow down traveling speeds, we can actually create that time and then the hump on the bridge would no longer be unsafe. We have the same condition on the other side where we have an existing crosswalk at Boughton Avenue. It's actually safer on this side because there's a straight stretch that has a good view of it uh, from the Eastern approach. Renee, would you like to comment? Uh, well, I was wondering, I mean, we keep talking about um, these things in conjunction with the, the reconstruction or the rehabilitation uh, of the bridge. And I, I think we need to meet with DOT to see if we can get them to put the crosswalks on because that would allow us to put the signs up like what you were saying we can't put those obstructive signs up until we have a crosswalk and a crosswalk in the grand scheme of things is very relatively inexpensive to to um put out um do you think they will do that before the street or the uh, bridge rehabilitation i think we need to lobby them as strongly as we can uh, we talked about last week of having a subsequent DOT meeting after this discussion today uh, to not only resolve some of the lighting issues on the bridge in terms of the bridge design, but also push for these other pedestrian improvements to, to ensure that we make a safer street. I have a question, Trustee Lanfear. Yes, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bob, when when we had the discussions with the DOT regarding the reconstruction of that bridge, uh, the, they're doing the deck. Has there been any discussion regarding reducing the um, the hump that is in that in that bridge currently? It's part of their that, reconstruction. That is not structurally possible because they are still governed by the shape of the bridge, and even though they're replacing the beams underneath it the actual truss follows an arc and they they really are limited uh to follow that arc today and you know there's two ways of looking at physical barriers like that the old way back in the 1960s and 1970s is to straighten every curve and flatten every hump so people can go faster but in some ways having a hump is as steep as that is is a benefit because the responsible thing is obviously to drive slower because you can't see. And when that's put in tandem with hopefully other improvements we make, perhaps even with lamps on the bridge that are between the sidewalk and the road, we will have a tangible effect to, again to make the driver feel physically enclosed like we do with the street trees and, and, to, and to induce uh, slower driver behavior. Well, then I would, I would, um hope that when in, in discussion of where to place that crosswalk, that the site distance is taken into consideration. Because when you are on that bridge, you, you do not see that, that entryway to Shane Place 
until or North Yale Common until you are on the crest of that bridge. You do not see it prior to that, and that's why there are so many vendor vendors right at, right at that very spot that you're talking about putting a crosswalk. It's it's no different from the crosswalk at Shane Place and North Main Street that has the same issue. And one of the considerations in putting a crosswalk there should be flashing beacons or some other device in addition to the yield side on the sides of the road to really increase its visibility. And we probably should do the same thing with a crosswalk at Boughton Avenue also. I mean, there's budget limitations here, but I think again, highlighting the visibility of these pedestrian crossings and have these, you know, Renee and I have talked ad nauseum to David at SRF, the more frequent, the closer together the crosswalks are, uh, the more walkable it is, the more pedestrians will cross the street and the slower drivers will travel. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, John. While you're talking about the bridge, um, I've heard twice, and I, it, it could be purely rumor, but the, that rumor is that uh, one side of the bridge, the sidewalk, I'm not sure which one is gonna be narrowed. Is there any truth to that? What we heard, John, and we we actually pushed back against this, is they want to narrow the sidewalk on both sides of the bridge by a foot, uh, so they can do use a different uh, detail to attach the handrail further from the edge of the slab where they think it will be more uh, durable. Um, we we both Renee and I, uh, who met with DOT, pushed back against this, saying this is you know backwards in terms of what our priorities are and i don't know if you want to add anything to that renee i was th i think we determined that the road is wide enough itself um that they that we could get both uh conditions met they can get their special new fasteners in and we can still maintain a a, a wider sidewalk um, right, right we, now I think, the sidewalk is seven feet wide yeah. they would reduce it to six feet maybe not now with social distancing maybe they'll um Maybe they'll allow us to to keep it. I mean, we're going to have to stay on top of this. They're going to try to reduce that sidewalk, and it's something that we're going to have to to really make sure that um, we are advocating to keep it because they don't need to make it seven feet by standards. They can keep it six feet, as I understand it. But we did talk to them, and and we all agreed and around that table that there's plenty of room. They don't need often. They need to sh shrink the sidewalk to give more room to meet the requirements of a state road. And they don't need to do that here. There's plenty of room. There's a, a more than adequate shoulder. So I think we have to, I'm, I'm really terrified they're gonna, gonna take away our- Well, I, I think sidewalk. we need to stay on it and we need to push on all fronts. You know, the sidewalk, the striping as John has suggested. I think all of these things, again, they all work in tandem. And if we don't watch them carefully in previous projects, they told us they would reduce the striping to 10 feet and then we looked and it was back to, to 12 and 14 feet. So uh, we really have to be vigilant in this whole process. Lily. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, I Again, we've gone over this before. Could you reiterate why we cannot have parking along that stretch of State Street, which would also deter speeding traffic? It will allow at least on one side. I, I'm not saying I agree with it. Their argument <laughs> is New York State 31 is a bike route, New York State bike route five. And they don't want, we could we could also put parallel parking on the Monroe Avenue section of route 31. There's plenty of room there to do it. Monroe Avenue used to be three lanes wide and the village had it reduced back to two. Um, that would do everything that we want. There's other villages that have the same flow with streets that are that dimension that have on-street parking. There's no reason we can't do it. It's just we have a DOT that's living in the 1970s. Well, maybe it's one of the things that we we might uh, advocate for then. We might as well push, and we know they're not going to do it now. But let's you always ask for more than you're going to get. Yeah, and Lily, um, good Thank point. I, I I'm capturing notes on all these, and we'll put this on the action items. I see Captain Delizer. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, Renee, I'll handle that if you want. Um, Dan, Dan could, could I make a request? When you do your notes, would you send them to Dorothea so we have one official set of everything that's in one yeah, place? That would I, help. I have and will, Bob. Um, Captain Delizer's back, so um, did, wanted to make sure he was addressed as well. 
Oh, Captain Delizer, you're back. You you have the floor. I am back. Um, sorry I had to run out there. Of course, inevitably, every time I'm in the middle of something, the phone rings. Um, I pretty much, I think, covered uh, what what we're going to be doing going forward. I guess, what questions does everybody have? I'll jump in first. How how does this work in your scheduling so that it's not what, – what I've heard from the residents quite a bit is that mm -hmm. – um, one off is really nice a regular cadence would be ideal how does that work what can you commit to how does that work in your world well what what we are in the town of pittsford uh which will include the village we have two cars assigned there uh, around the clock so all three of our shifts uh, morning afternoon and, and overnight have two cars so there's a in addition obviously to their calls for service that they're answering uh, their investigations that they're working on. Uh, when they have downtime, there's a number of what we call special attention requests that uh, that uh, they have to uh, to uh, take care of. So throughout the town of Pittsford, I would I will say that the town of Pittsford is very heavy with with special attention requests, uh, probably more so than than uh, Parrington and Penfield combined. There's quite a bit. Uh, obviously, the location of the town is a factor for that because. Pittsburgh's more towards the middle of the county than Parrington or Penfield, which are more on the outskirts. So it's a, it's a matter of getting in and addressing all of those different special attention requests for mostly traffic. So they're gonna, they will rotate on their downtime uh, in between jobs, between the different SA requests. So it's, a, it's one of those, it's nothing we're gonna say every day at this time, we're gonna have this much or every particular shift, we're gonna have this many, this many minutes or hours uh, dedicated to it. It's really, it's going to be call dependent. Their first priority is answering 911 calls for service, uh, getting their criminal investigations that they're that they all carry uh, their follow up. So if somebody reports getting their car broken into, their house broken into, uh, the the deputies will usually handle those investigations themselves unless it becomes so complex that we pass it off to one of our investigators. But uh, typically, a deputy is carrying you know, five or six or seven. Uh, uh, criminal investigations at any given point. So getting those uh, taken care of obviously are, are, uh, is also a uh, draw on their on their downtime, but definitely uh, hitting the special attentions, particularly for Pittsburgh, which has always had more. So that's always been uh, uh, even more of a priority for the Pittsburgh cars, making sure those are those are all addressed. So it's a uh, it's a, uh, a really um, a matter of how much downtime that they have and how many special attention requests are active within uh, within the town and village of Pittsford at any given point. Sure, thank you. And just one quick follow-up question. Um, are you okay with us doing PR around this? Uh, it, it's, it's not exactly a white lie, but it, us saying, hey, the police are gonna be there a lot more and, and broadcasting mm -hmm. that to our community. Yeah. Obviously that hits sure. the people that live here, doesn't hit the people speeding in from outside right. and, in, in other places, but are, in general, are you okay with us Absolutely. kind of telling everybody this? As a Absolutely. Well? Absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, our, our uh, priority is getting people to slow down. We're not really there to write a lot of tickets. I mean, if that's what we have to do to make the problem stop, then we'll do it. But if we can get people to slow down uh, through education, great. Uh, if we, you know, my guess is usually we do with issues like this. It's a combination of education and and uh, enforcement. So they'll see if they see the deputies there. I mean, let's face it. Every time it, it's not just when they're working on speed enforcement. If they're working on a report, uh, find a place in that area to write it. Because every time someone sees a police car, they assume that they're shooting radar, uh, even if you're just there working on a report or something. So. Uh, having the cars will, generally speaking, the cars will, when they have to work on something that they're going to be, uh, you know, writing, they will go find uh, one of their special attentions that is in their juris in their area of assignment, and they'll go sit there when they do it because it kind of kills two birds with one stone. They get their work done and uh, they provide some they provide some deterrent by doing that. Looks like John Limbeck has his yep. hand up. John, you have the floor. Um, Captain Delizer, I was wondering, since this um, the DOT has all of this in the works, the planning for the bridge and everything, is mm -hmm. there any way the Sheriff's Department can weigh in on the DOT's plans for any recommendations? We typically do not weigh in with the Department of Transportation with any of their projects. 
Uh, we're here for enforcement uh, to improve public safety, but we are not traffic engineers, so we don't we don't cross into that lane uh, with with them. Uh, if they ask us a specific question, of course we would we would answer it. But uh, no, typically speaking, uh, they. We, we just don't have the experience with traffic design like they do. So there's not a lot that we're probably going to be able to offer in terms of how the road is set up. Uh, that's really their well, area of expertise. Because my I was with a friend this afternoon. She lives in Wood Creek. And um, she, she thinks there's about 400 people that live there. Mm -hmm. And if we could eliminate the two 45-mile-an-hour signs between Mitchell Road and mm -hmm. the village boundary, that would help tremendously. And since like the sheriff's department is aware of local population changes and things like mm -hmm. that, if we could get rid of those two signs, that would help tremendously. Mm -hmm. And and once again, what, what I've discovered, because there's, uh, there's a few uh, department of transportation committees that I go to on a regular basis, or I did before all this COVID stuff happened. Uh, there are, I have discovered by sitting in on those meetings, there are, uh, a lot of rules regarding signage and what they have to do depending on the way the roads are, the populations are. So usually when I, when, uh, I see requests like that made, the, the engineer will usually have a, a lengthy response into the laws of why it has to be a certain way. So, um, and yet I will I freely admit, I don't understand it and I don't, uh, it's not my, my area of expertise. So. Uh, ultimately, I say something like that would be best directed uh, either from the village or from the residents towards the DOT saying, hey, we'd like this, and then see what their response is. Uh, do they have to have them there? And if they don't, then then uh, that's obviously a conversation that, uh, that uh, I think that the village could have with them to say, well, if we don't need to have them there, do we want to have them there? And, and, and kind of have that conversation. So then it's up to our, the officials of the village to take care of that, because That's to cite town, an example, coming oh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, that would be the town, so it would be the, where the, in there before the village, it would be the town. I'm sorry, my apologies. And, and can coming, I just okay. give coming you some background village. here? We, well, one we of the things, coming into the village on Jefferson Road, about. there is like five 30 mile an hour signs before you get to the village on mm -hmm. Jefferson Road. So I don't understand if past precedents, you know, plays any part of this, why mm -hmm. we can't use that as an example. Right. And, we, and I don't I have, don't know. Yeah. We we as village residents have met with DOT at least five times. Uh in several of these meetings, we had Bill Smith from the town uh with us to request that we enact a transition zone. One of one of their one of the reasons why the DOT initially resisted the 25 mile per hour speed limit is they said, well, you're gonna have rear end collisions. Well, the solution to that, we, we talked to SRF, our traffic engineer, the solution is to have a transition zone that goes down to say, like you said, 35 miles per hour, like it does on Jefferson Road. And particularly we made the argument that both the Wood Creek neighborhood and certainly the Highland Cottages, which has been built in the last 10 years, both have uh, high percentages of elderly drivers, it makes sense to lower the speed limit there. But they they just are, you know, stubborn, I would say. But I think it's, it's something we should continue to push on and we should seek uh, support from not only the town, but also the school district as well. So Bob, just a quick it, it question. It doesn't make any you said, sense. You said they are pushing back. Did you mean DOT or the- DOT, the I mean- Okay. Because in Region our four of DOT. Okay. Right. In the active transportation plan, we I mean, I think we have Bill Smith support on the transition zone. So we just need to maybe um, step up teaming with them to to push for that to happen. Step, step up our lobbying and okay. even if we, you know, want to ask help from our um, Albany um, representatives, we should do okay. that also. So that's an again, that's an easy, inexpensive fix. It's a sign change. <laughs> it makes so much sense because you're on the bridge and like we've all noticed, you see that 45 mile per hour sign. You do. Please remember that a year ago, uh, Rich Funky's office told me explicitly that we weren't important enough to warrant his help. Well, he's not going to be in office much longer because his, ter his, term, his term has expired at the end of the, the year. 
Okay, is there um, is there anything else that you all as um, residents want to, so that we can uh, let uh, Captain Delizer go about his, his day before he gets another phone call? Is there anything else that you would like to communicate with him to, or to him? And then how do we follow up with him on this, on uh, keeping uh, current on how things are going over there? So he knows- Brooke, Brooke has her hand up. Uh, so did John, but I, I won't repeat a lot because I think um, all of the neighbors and Renee and the mayor have done a great job explaining our problem and why we're so frustrated. Um, we, I think the problem is in both directions. And I think you, Captain Delicer, alluded to understanding that, but it truly is when people come over the bridge going outbound, they just pick up speed and they are just cruising out of town. And I took some video and you can see Art's, you know, video in and out, but um, I'm, it's a problem in both directions. People are not slowing down. They're not taking their foot off the gas. You basically have to take your foot off the gas uh, when you get over that hill coming in to reach 30 miles an hour by the time you hit the village line and nobody is doing that. I mean, mm -hmm. we do it as neighbors and the few people that know about it, um, but no, like nobody else is. And I do notice when you guys are out there with your patrol cars, it is a noticeable difference. Like I'll be mm -hmm. in the yard and I'm like, oh my gosh, the traffic's going so slow. I wonder what's going on. And I go out and sure enough, there's a car out there. So mm -hmm. out there is, truly making a difference if it can be a regular thing yep. I, we will really really appreciate it so thank you it's too bad you know you can't leave a dummy car that occasionally the <laughs> the, the lights on the top would start to light so people would think it was really an active car we, we do have a program where we do put cars out uh we do not have that technology however though but if uh, you find where you can find that let me know <laughs> <laughs> um, Captain Delicer, uh, Art uh, gave us two um, kind of Google uh, map uh, shots of Durham Way and suggested that that would be a great place for your um, cars to sit because you can see both directions and you can mm -hmm. get in and out quickly. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make sure that you um, receive those. I don't know, uh, Thank you. Art, you want to chime in there, Art? I don't, okay. I think that's good enough then. Well, maybe I can chime in, excuse me, Bob Michaels. Oh, go. go ahead, Bob. I live right on the corner facing State Street on the corner of Durham Way, and yes, agreed, that would be uh, an ideal spot. It won't, it won't hinder anybody on Durham Way, um, and I think it'd be a fruitful spot coming both ways. And I welcome it. Yep, okay, I'll, I'll make sure that the deputies are aware. Okay, so the trailer, um, Captain Delicer, you'll let us know when the trailer is out. And I mean, I, we, we do know that the mere presence of that thing, much like having a patrol mm -hmm. car sitting, will change driver behavior, which is right. um, great. Um, mm -hmm. So it won't be a true sense of, it's, it's not like when you go undercover and try to collect traffic data, you know, mm -hmm. doing a, a speed count from a different way, but it'll help um, just <clears throat> communicate that we're, we care about you slowing right. down and you need to slow down and you missed the piece um, Zach um, who is our director of DPW put out the speed sentry signs are they already out okay. Zach yes okay and then some cones that we're gonna try to to make people slow down a little bit but it's you know because it's DOT um, they they may at some point ask us why the cones are out but we're gonna mm -hmm. hopefully you know that just again another hazard in the road another alert right. um i think that i i think those are the only two things that you you missed okay um, i think john had something else to say i oh, i just wanted to offer uh captain Delizer. i've got one of the flattest driveways on state street number 62. Mm -hmm. um you can get in and out both directions very easy I've got a bathroom, I've got a coffee pot, and cold water. 62 State. I will pass that on to the cars that uh, that you're good with them using the driveway. Thank you, and thanks for taking Thank the you. time. Oh, Andy, thanks for your time today. No can problem ask, at all. Uh, excuse me, can I ask uh, the captain one more? Yeah, yes, you can. Give him one more comment. More. Thank you. Uh, captain, I am under the belief very sternly that uh, tickets are the answer. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it could create 
a public relations issue perhaps that the sheriff's department doesn't really want to tangle with no However, we, we, we issue tickets all the time so that we've been doing that forever so not really okay my my encouragement would be uh to have your people ticket as much as possible we've gone through the phase a couple of years ago of warnings that did very little uh, there were a few tickets issued, but I think uh, especially when they see the uh, the lights lit up, when the cars are lit uh, and they've stopped somebody and an officer is talking to that speeder, everybody going by will not only slow down, but they will put themselves in that shoe. Mm -hmm. So I encourage that very much. Thanks for your help. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay. Anything else while we still have Andy? Any other comments, questions for the captain? Andy, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, having me. This was, uh, you all shared my first experience with a video internet meeting. So thank you very much for your, your patience with, while I kind of fumbled around with this and learned my way through it. Thank you very much. It was definitely, a great uh, job. It, it, is the fu it is the future. I'm sure this will be the first of many times that I will be doing this. Do you want to do it again with us tomorrow? <laughs> whenever, you guys, whenever you guys want to do this, let me know. I'll be more than happy to be there. I'll get better at it every time, I promise. Thanks, Captain. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, Bob, you're going to let us know when the DOT Can everybody meeting... hear me? I'm just hearing audio. Yeah, I've got to contact Joel at the DOT, and we'll send around an email so you'll all know when that is. All Thank right. you. And thanks for doing this today, trustees and everybody. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Get outside. Thanks, guys. Keep the ideas <laughs> coming, okay? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Brooke, can you, Brooke, can you meet me um, you. at hey. your driveway for a second after? Brooke? Sure. I don't know sure. if you can hear me. Okay, just for a second, I want to ask you something. Thanks. Wait, is there lemonade involved or something? It sounds like we're missing <laughs> something exciting. I, I have, I have <laughs> cookies. <laughs> I have cookies. Eggs. Hey, guys, <laughs> the trustees, is it is it time to call in uh, Charlie? Ba and, uh, and Jeff. And Jeff? Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll call Jeff. So, Okay. So what I'll, I'll, I uh, oh sorry Dan and Bob and I let's let, uh, I just want to make sure I get all the um once you send your notes around just some of the action items so that we keep track of them and um but we don't need to do that right now with everyone on online but and then uh Art Bob I don't know who else is left here um Brooke who is the best is, should is there one person that we could be in touch with in your neighborhood just so we can keep an eye on how things are going with the now that the deputies are stepping up their enforcement and we've got cones out and radar signs I vote for Brooke I vote for Brooke does everybody else vote for Brooke <laughs> that's great because I talk to Brooke all the time so that's easy <laughs> and, you know I'm happy. we're here all the time I'm always I've always okay. got my friends on the street um, but I, you know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. There, people have been dealing with this for like 30 years, and you know, they've been working on this far longer than me. But you know, what well, talk I was going to say, talk amongst yourselves, and then let us know. That of the State Street neighbors. Okay. <laughs> okay right. I, I will try to set up. An, I will try to set up a meeting with Joel at DOT this week, and I will let everybody know when that is. Is that Bob? Is that something that um, the neighbors will be invited to, or is that we're just keeping them in touch uh, or keeping them updated on what happens during that? I think we'll we'll just keep them updated okay. because generally, I think unless DOT is having a public information yeah. meeting, they prefer just to meet with two representatives. Okay, I just didn't want to uh, miscommunicate on that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And, and and I would ask the rest of the board if you allow Renee and I to meet with DOT. Um, because that's generally their preference is to not meet with the whole board. It also simplifies the scheduling. And we'll we'll keep you all in the loop. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Next item, we have consideration of a peddler's permit, I believe, for holiday hots. And Jeff Turner is going to give us some background. After looking at the proposal we approved last week, 
Uh, Steve actually went up there with Charlie from Holiday Hots and was concerned about the safety of that site. Um, Jeff has taken uh, another look at the code and found another section that actually allows us another option, which is simpler uh, to approve Holiday at their traditional location across the street from Village Hall and eliminates the safety concerns. So I'm gonna give Jeff, if you wanna unmute yourself, you have the floor. So it's a transient uh, retail merchant license and that's Steve, or this is what Steve suggested last Tuesday. Um, but in, in, in reading the code further, the clerk can allow this anywhere in the village. So there's no reason why it can't be allowed exactly where he was before. And that would not, that would eliminate any of the problems that they, the traffic problems and the sidewalk problems that would exist where it was anticipated he might go last Tuesday. Um, it's, a, it's exactly as Steve talked about last Tuesday. Steve, you got anything further on this? You're muted, Steve. Steve, unmute. I'm trying to. Okay. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. All right, yeah, I, I Charlie and I met down in uh, across from Blades and I wasn't comfortable with it at all. He's he would be way too close to the um to the traffic there and it's not worth it. You know what I mean? To to have him to risk it. So the transient merchant um item is a way to put him across the street, but it is also a pretty uh, extensive loophole that I think needs to be removed from the code because it doesn't. I hadn't gotten there yet, but this is a really scary uh, provision in the code, and I, I just didn't know it was there, and I apologize for that. But it's not it's not something we ought to have in our code. No, the same the, the same permissions with controls are already embedded in the zoning code. That one allows pretty much carte blanche to anybody who meets the criteria, and gives Dorothea the absolute discretion, which is not appropriate for for her description the description of her duties in the in the village law and probably something that she doesn't really want okay so for now we can use it but we want to take it out eventually yeah i wouldn't say if eventually I right i i would say we can use it now but uh i would get rid of it okay so can i make them can i then make a motion or and I, I think this? let me so i think that we ought to try to s stay as close to the code as we can but try to meld in her powers and dorothea's powers and duties as defined by village law so even though it isn't provided that it is done this way in the code i would suggest that it be a trusty resolution authorizing her to issue the license um, collect the appropriate deposit, collect the appropriate tax, impose the same conditions as the ZBA imposed for this temporary use last year. Uh, the only thing we need to fill it in the blank on is the period that this is going to be in use. Last year it was, I think, May 1st, October, October 31st. Obviously, May 1st is gone. May 19th to October 31st. If that's what Charlie wanted, Tim. Yeah. So it was May, May May 1st to October 31st. I don't know what, what is, do we know what Charlie wants, Steve? He wants to be there. He wants to be there as soon as possible. So, I mean, if we did it through October 31st, as long as weather permitted, he would stay till then. They typically do not travel to the South till somewhere around Thanksgiving. All right. So, I mean, it could be it could be from now until uh, October 31st, 2020. Uh, the additional condition I would like to see in there is that it's going to be uh, compliant with any current New York State executive orders and requirements of New York State and Monroe County Health Departments. And, and I'd like to propose some language to include as a finding for the resolution. 
um, I'd like to propose that the Board of Trustees finds that this is an appropriate location for a transient merchant because it does not conflict with existing storefronts or other um, <clears throat> existing food serving businesses and is adjacent to the municipal lot providing uh, parking and a safe means of accessing uh, the, the vendor. It I also, agree, Bob. It, I'm sorry. It also, it also is not uh, near where it will have uh, a nuisance or adverse effect on neighboring homes or a residential neighborhood. Bob, I'm in agreement with that. Will the um, will the the people from Hungries or Thirsties think differently? Do Do we have any problems there because it's close to that? Uh, you know, they. They've coexisted for the 10 years that he's been here. So I yeah. think I think we're pretty safe on that. There, okay. He's not on the same street. He's not on the same block. He's not in front of their businesses. He's around the corner. Um, so, you know, in theory, he's paying rent to the town of Pittsford. Um, but that's something that's between him and the town of Pittsford. Exactly. Um, Jeff, I have a question for you. Do we need any language in here saying you know, normally this is the purview of the PZBA, but given the pandemic. Um, no, I, no, I, I wouldn't get into that at all. I mean, this is a totally different animal than than the temporary zoning permit. Um, it's a, it just it's a legitimate section of our code. It just may be yeah. a section that we may want to modify when we get to that. Fair yes. enough. Just wanted to Trustee check. Lanthier. I, I would suggest, Trustee Lanfear, I would suggest that we do that sooner rather than later because we're setting a precedent. And if, if one transient um, license is permitted, we can expect others. So I think that we probably want to take care of it sooner rather than later. And that's precisely, Lily, why I added the language, because I wanted to clarify why a transient merchant permit might be allowable here, but may not be appropriate in another location where it would cause a nuisance or a conflict with businesses that pay taxes. Yes, and, I, and I agree. To circle back on the discussion the last time we got together, um, would this also be applicable for food trucks in that same parking lot? It seems like so, it would be. So I would say that, first of all, what I was gonna answer, say is that one of the reasons we're not allowing him on the street is because it is a hazard to pedestrian and street traffic. And yes, uh, if you have, a food truck that wants to come in and is like and is situated in a like place and area, you would be difficult to turn him down. That's right. But 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 the whole problem here is that this is really a cobbled process. We're not we're not following the process of our code because if we were following the process of our code, the trustees wouldn't be this wouldn't be a trustee issue and it ought to be. So we're not in compliance with our code, but we're trying to do the best we can to keep Dorothea on the straight and narrow in terms of her authority under village law. I think by having trustee involvement in doing a resolution, it gives weight to the poorly written section of the code that gives uh, Dorothea an administrative official discretionary power. But yep. by having findings and having a finding of the Board of Trustees, it demonstrates a thoroughness to the process so that her approval is, is relegated to being, being only administrative. Yes. Trustee Lanfear, would hi, Bob, um, I would then assume that to have this section just removed from the code would be a fairly simple yes. process because we're right. just taking it in its entirety and just removing it because it's covered in other parts of our code. Correct. So we're taking an outdated section and we're just eliminating it. So we don't Correct. need to stretch this out for six months. We can deal with it in a very timely fashion. We could. We'll, we'll have to take That'll it to good. public hearing and we'll yes. have to have a revision thing written, prepared for when we have that resolution to take it to public hearing. We yes. could do that at our next meeting. That would be excellent. Thank you. And simultaneously, though, uh, we want to make sure that the PZBA then has what they need to be able to 
approve these because uh, along with this justin was concerned that the way the the code is written for him he would not have been able to approve this so we want to make sure that we do those two things in tandem and lily i respect what you're saying that you don't want this to take six months i don't either but we also don't want to leave it in a situation where nothing could ever get approved no i think that this trustee land fear that that the code that we have in place would address that, and I mean, we have had several uh, um, temporary uses uh, over the over the years. Uh, the the Christmas tree sales and hot dog um, cart being two of them, and I think that the way it's operated for the past 10 years or 15 years has been successful. And um, I understand the reservations uh, expressed by the PCBA, but I think Jeff also answered those. Um, and but by just changing a few of the of the pieces of language in that code i think it would have satisfied the pcba uh their concerns and also make our temporary use permit uh, uh process a little more streamlined because it's more steve clear has, steve has a comment steve yeah i think i think uh it, in the in the adjusting of the code removing the transient merchant and then uh, you know looking at the code we need to talk to justin because he seemed to allude something about the code that that he would not have liked to have done a temporary permit for uh charlie because of the residential nature of the zone so it might i i'd say we need to get justin involved exactly what the conflict is with the wording of the code that he feels he would not have been able to uh, approve Charlie based on the way the code is written right now. So the biggest thing is maybe somehow just adjust so that the LOR is exempt from some of the restriction of the residential because it has a residential moniker, but it's truly not a residential neighborhood. It's a residential in vision, right. not in use. Mm -hmm. There, are, I have read Justin Lee Gibbs' uh, memo about his concerns, and they're very easily fixed. It's a it's a two or three sentence fix, and it's Great. all there's no problems. Great. So let's do that simultaneously with taking out the other language that granted Dorothea the. Um, yep. the, other, the other thing I want to say real quick is that Charlie and his wife have gone to classes. Uh, in regards to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, they have taken the classes on how to conduct their business safely, do social distancing, and operate within the, the letter of the new um, executive orders. Good. Thank we'll you, make sure that's part of the, uh, of the findings. All right. I, I just want to be clear on this. I mean, I've, let's, I, should we finish Harlot A before we yes, go on please. to this? Let, what's let's, going on let's with the code? That. So we have we have a, uh, a motion on the floor, and I agree with uh, Lily's addendum that we should acknowledge that an, another finding is that the the code enforcement officer has told us that uh, the operators of this business have gotten training uh, for how to enact appropriate social distancing during the coronavirus crisis. Do we have a second? Second. That's your second. Okay, uh, Dorothea, could we have a roll call vote? Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Trustee Galusha. Yes, Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Lamphier. Trustee Lamphier, aye. Motion passes. So Dorothea, he should, uh, Charlie should come see you to get the paperwork done properly? Um, yeah, I guess. And the problem is we don't even have, Steve, is this something you can create in the program? I have nothing I can issue because we've never issued this permit. Uh, so I'll, I'll work take, with Steve I'll to come up with it. Okay. okay, thanks guys. I'll let Charlie know. You have to get a $500 deposit, Dorothea. That I do know. Okay. So, so in terms of the code change, uh, we had discussed doing it, doing a 
6.1 draft of the or, or enactment of the code, but I think you know for these temporary use permits, we've got uh, the the Christmas tree guy coming in on the horizon. Believe it or not, that's coming soon. Uh, we probably ought to fix this so the planning board or the zoning board, rather the zoning board of appeals, feels comfortable operating. Um, I can get my proposed changes to you quickly. Um, the question is the interface with the zoning board of appeals, which I do I, not I can recommend. Hand, handle. I've already talked to Justin extensively about this issue. And I think we we're on the same page. I think the the stumbling block is simply the name of the district, which it's it's like residential office, and it's like Steve said, it's residential character. It's not and those buildings are entirely office use. It's because they're surrounded by parking lots. I doubt we'll see a residential use back there. It is a multi-use district, but I think we could simply call it residential character to 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 distinguish it from the two true residential districts that we have i don't i don't really think you need to go that far um okay i think you what just, do you suggest I, i'm i don't have chapter and verse with me but i can get that to you i put it in a memo um it's just a cleaning up a couple of the phrases in in the code and then then the temporary use permits will apply to every district as they did in our previous code which never gave us a problem which we used for you know 60 plus years without any any lawsuit or any problem so i i just don't see the problem so why don't we delegate this to jeff and ask jeff to present it at our next board meeting and then we could also invite the pzba uh to attend that meeting virtually so they can weigh in i would agree everybody? to that trustee lanfier okay everybody's okay with that i, I just don't i mean looking towards the future Dorothea, I don't think knows how we're going to be meeting at, at our next meeting. Uh, uh, next week's no. meeting will be virtual, um, as Bob was able to. Oh, that's yes, right. It's in May. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It's we're May. looking at um, June 7th right now is the latest extension of the change in the open meetings law. I hoping I hate to say that word. Um, I anticipate that they're going to extend that. I can't imagine and this leads to the other item that i remembered bob that we talked about that we wanted jeff to look at um the sand patch they're looking about their non-municipal and operating i'm not we're not sure where that falls on us if we issue well, that well, non-municipal. Well, and this is for steve and for jeff but we're concerned that are they we can and we do grant them a permit conditional upon compliance with whatever New York State standards are for the phases of reopening. Oh, I would I would think so. I don't know what Steve thinks, but I think provided that you make everything that you do subject to the executive orders and the and the health department requirements, you're only telling them they can do it. But if they're out of compliance, that's their problem, not our problem. Yeah, that's Steve. we just want to clarify so we're not taking on liability. Uh, Steve? Yeah, I, I would definitely say any resolution you make has to be based on following the guidelines for the uh, pandemic. And and unfortunately, it's it'll be on me by the paperwork that I've received from the state to make sure that they um, adhere to those guidelines. And the other thing I want to mention, just fixing the LOR aspect as Jeff alluded, uh, changing the code is required because the other uh, problem you have or other issue that Justin had um, issue with is the Buffalo Bills. And that's in the school in a residential district in the LOR, not in, or I mean in the uh, regular residential, not in the LOR. So the, the wording has to be adjusted overall, not just for that district. And, and I think what the other concern that the planning board had, Jeff, again, was they were concerned that we not allow temporary commercial operations on residential properties and residential neighborhoods. The two exceptions where we might want to allow that are things like the farmer's market on an institutional property in a residential district at the Spiegel Center and the example that Steve mentioned of the Buffalo Bills. 
All right, I, then that that's going to be a whole different rethinking of the temporary use permit statute. When we adopted this code, we adopted it from the perspective that we were trying to import into the new code, basically the policies from the old code regarding temporary use permits. And there was never any distinction about residential or commercial. The use was whether or not it would be compatible with the neighborhood in which it was being placed uh, and, and whether or not there would be public interest and public safety issues. So there was never a residential versus commercial zoning district approach. It was always village wide. So if that's going to change, um, that will need a little more work than I had thought. Uh, because right now, I mean, my approach had been that we were trying to do in the new code what we had done in the old, which is what that new code accomplishes with a little language cleanup. But if you're going to say we're going to treat temporary uses in residential districts different than in the commercial districts, then that's going to be a much different kind well, of change. I'm just, we haven't really discussed it as a board. And, you know, the one uh, problem I can see from uh, Justin and Justin's interpretation of what they'd like to see is in the past, I believe we gave a, there was a temporary use permit granted for a, an estate sale. And the reason for doing that was because of parking and loading on Monroe Avenue, where it was perceived there might be a safety problem. So, I mean, obviously we don't want to prohibit estate sales. Um, so we've got, we sort of got to think this one through. Actually, I thought that with that estate sale, we did a non-municipal use permit to address. I thought we did a non-municipal use because they yeah, were using that, the that's sidewalk. Right. That's right, because it's the right of way. That involved the right of way. Yep, you're right. And I, I think that, and if you want to use the example of the estate sale, and Steve, chime in if you disagree. I think that an estate sale is a normal uh, accessory use for a residential use. I mean, it's something that happens in residential areas when somebody passes away, somebody sells. It's it's sort of a normal accessory residential use. I, I feel the same, and we talked about this before. Some of this are like a one-day tent in a yard. Um, those things should not have to go, it should not be the, you know, the board shouldn't have to weigh in and have a public hearing on putting a, a one day event up. That's that's my feeling. It should be an administrative um, item that's taken care of in house without having to go through, you know, jump through a bunch of hoops. If somebody wanted to have a one day or two day estate sale, a one day 10 event, um, that I think should be taken care of within the office versus the, as, the board. As long as it, it doesn't become, you know, every weekend yes. at, at this house, they're hosting weddings, you know, something yeah. where it's for yeah, commercial well, profit. That, and that's the building inspector's job to make sure that he's looking at these things to make sure that they are in fact a normal accessory use for the district. So okay. I, I, I think that our temporary use permit code, current code works. It, there may have been a little confusion in some of the language and that's easily rectified, but that wouldn't really entail a philosophical change about where we're headed with this. So, so let's, Jeff, I think we should delegate this one to you. And then uh, if you could circulate whatever you propose so we can all look at it a little bit with the agenda for the next the next board meeting. Sure. Does that give you enough time? Oh yeah, I've already done, I'm done with it. I okay. just have to all find right. my email and replicate it. Let's, let's do that, give Steve. Justin, let's give Justin yeah, a head you, Just out of curious, if we're in, in the part of the transient merchant, if you were going to plan on removing it in whole, do you have to set up for a public hearing now? So that it's done, that at least section is done in the relative near future. It, they can't, Steve, at this time. They have to have the local law removing it in front of them before they set a motion, set that We have to have the actual uh, language on a document. Okay. Okay. So that's next meeting. All right. Anything else? Just a quick not, update. Um, 
Yeah. I just want to give ahead, a quick Dorothea. update. I'm going to um, send out the tentative agenda tomorrow. We really don't have much on there except what we're just adding now. We have the public hearing for the pub. I still not have heard from him as to what is going on over there. So that is the only thing we had really for that meeting and probably a bill pay. So with so, a couple items we're just adding. So and for the pub, Dor Dorothea, refresh my recollection. Wasn't that application for an event in May? It was. Well, I think we're getting past the point where the public had notice of it originally that there was an event scheduled there for May. And now we don't know if or when he's going to do it. I think we kind of ought to pull the plug on this and let him start over because the public really doesn't have any idea that we're thinking about going for that. The only time he could do it would be after May, so the public does, isn't aware of that at all. He's not going to be doing it in May anyway, so I think that makes sense. So what do we need to do? Just to, um, we, so we tabled I think it before. We tabled before to, to next Tuesday, correct, Dorothea? Yes. So on Tuesday, we'll deal, we'll deal with it, and I think we ought to just um, not deny, just get rid of the application and refund whatever he paid. Um, just just one other note on potentially an item, and it depends. Uh, Steve has got to talk to the owner about it, but there is a request from uh, Lock 32 to open a temporary uh, patio in the lot, the parking lot that Ted Collins owns next to it. The the proposal is not complete or firm yet, but that may or may not be on the agenda for Tuesday. Steve is talking to Casey. And to be clear, everybody, that's the lot between Aladdin's and Lock 32 that has a handful of spots in it. That's right. That's correct. Also, guys, just got a text from Charlie, and he said, you know, he, he wanted me to thank the board and uh, Jeff and Dorothea for um, helping push that through. And he was sorry he couldn't attend. He had a personal situation come up. You ought to thank Steve. Steve's thanks. the one who found this in the code. That's right. So All right, thank everybody you, but Steve. <laughs> A little fun reading in the middle of the night. All right. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Secondly seconded. Um, Dorothea, could you do a roll call vote? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Lanfear. Lanfear, aye. Got it. Motion Thank passes. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Right. Don't forget to stop the recording, I'm going to stop. Dorothea. I'm going All to. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.